So do you have any feel for what to expect? Man, 50 years of hip hop, I feel like it's just gonna be legendary. How about this guy right here? LL, the coolest. LL, man, that's a, another GOAT. When I think of just old school rappers with the gold chains and the track suits and, you know what I mean? Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Maurice Dubois and we're excited to bring you to the Hip Hop Museum under construction here in the Bronx at 145th Street just off the Major Deegan Expressway. We're going to take this journey back through time with Jay Critch, a new generation New York City rapper. Hip Hop had already been around for more than two decades before he was even born. We had the privilege of getting a look at some extraordinary hip-hop memorabilia before it moves to its permanent home here at the museum when it opens in 2025. Now, the actual birth of hip-hop as we know it happened about three miles north of here in a small, modest rec room in an apartment building where young people, bursting with creative energy and a desire to party and have a good time, created a culture that would go on to change the world. Community room at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, the birthplace of hip hop. Wow. This is where DJ Cool Herc gave his first documented right, right, right. hip hop party on August 11, 1973. This is literally this is the, the room, room where it happened. Yeah, this, this is, is it. it. This is it. Over the last year of celebrating hip hop's 50th, we've heard a lot about 1520 Cedric Avenue, and it was an absolute thrill to be there. A room where a group of teenagers showed up to a back to school party thrown by the legendary DJ Cool Herc and his sister Cindy Campbell, where for the first time, Herc used two turntables to extend the instrumental breaks on songs and started rhyming over the beats. The kids at the party loved it. We went back with a couple of the OGs of this art form, Curtis Brown, best known as Grandmaster Kaz, and Sharon Green, who goes by Shah Rock, the first female rapper. We knew within our hearts that we had something. We didn't know that it would become a billion dollar business because we were lucky to get $2 or $3 from our parties when, right. to, to get them to come inside. What's it like for you to be in this room with these two absolute pioneers? I can't even breathe. It's crazy. But be honest, the true pioneer legends is the people that created the thing for me to do. I call myself a participant and a representative of the hip hop culture. Also with us, Daryl McDaniels, known around the world as DMC from the legendary Run DMC. So, My name is Shaw. Uh -huh. Shaw, I'm not a millionaire. I don't have a car. But there's one thing I want y'all to know. What do you say? I'm a that I'm a good loving person from Long Time ago. Go. Shaw Rock is the woman with the magical touch. I'm like burning fire. You know I'm just too much. What was the fee to get to the party? Well, it was 25 cents for, for, for girls, and it was 50 cents for guys. Now, you know how that works. Why's it got to be like that? Let the girls in for cheap. They'll fill up the joint, and the guys will pay whatever to get in there after that. $20 to get us um, some White Castle, mm -hmm. or money sure. just to get on a train, you know? We were happy to just get that. We were young teenagers with little or no resources that wasn't even connected to radio stations first. That our form of communication was through flyers, word of mouth, Right? This is the first part that Cool Herc played in. Oh, well, Herc would have a, a table set up, of course, with his equipment out here, and they would either... With the ropes? Uh, of course, the, the ropes. ropes. You gotta have the ropes, ropes in front of, of your turntable. That's... that's so that's nobody space. messed the music up. That's Bible. That's no. sacred space right there. We're gonna see a new rock. Before they and it's party time. We're gonna rock the house. What does it mean to be the first female rapper? How do you want that to be noted? How do you want people to see you? I want people to see me and I, to, to say, okay, listen, she helped the movement. She helped the movement that is global. Grandmaster Kaz was a crucial part of that early movement, too. His lyrics and nickname were used by his former manager, Big Bank Hank, throughout the song Rapper's Delight. But he never gave Kaz any credit, and Kaz never got a penny. But in your case, you wrote the actual lyrics that were lifted, used. What's your actual feeling? I've gone through the gamut of emotions, you know, as far as that situation is concerned. Um, I went from, eh, whatever, you know, to, hey, where's, where's my dough, to, 
hey, is there any way I can get that dough or, or get that? And so many people running away from it or not wanting to acknowledge it or, or whatever. I just like, all right, it is what it is. I'm just glad to be able to say that my lyrics were some of the first lyrics that the world heard, okay, uh, when this hip hop thing went public. What do you want them to say about you after it's all said and done? I want them to say that without him, this thing wouldn't be as dope as it is today. <laughs> this is how we listen to music. Crazy. Like, did you, have you ever like played a boombox? I think use that. I think so. Ah, you gotta go like this on the block. Right, that's how guys used to do it. <laughs> We'd be at the basketball court with these things. This is crazy. That's how everybody right played music. This is what I'm carrying around to right. play my tunes all day long. Got a cash, got a ice, had a bracelet. Try to take it and you gon' need a facelift. 30s with me, they ain't leaving no traces. To this day, can't really get a hold of how much of an impact that this music has had on the world. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm a rapping to the beat. Now we have some real original memorabilia right here. Here, this is the Sugar, Sugar Hill, Hill Gang. Yeah. These guys made the first record in Inglewood, New Jersey, 1979. Uh, the first hip hop record was Rapper's Delight, mm -hmm. and these guys did it. And here's here's a, a cassette tape of it. Crazy. The actual tape. Crazy. What do you think of that? That's ridiculous. We gotta pop that into the boombox. I said a hip hop, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip. Why did that occur to you? Why did you use those words? The hip, to the hip, the hip, the hip, the you don't stop. Because it was new. Just like people in rock say, let's rock. Let's rock and roll. That's what hip hop was. I said a hip hop. Yeah. I said a one, two, three, four, come on, girls. Again, on. They are rap royalty, the original kings, Wonder Mike, Mike Wright, and Master G, Guy O'Brien, two of the three original members of the Sugar Hill Gang. We met with their team at their studio in Inglewood, New Jersey, to break down their most improbable journey to music immortality, which started with creating a whole new type of record. I always thought the letter B was percussive. Don't stop rocking to the bang, making the boogie say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to be. And that's why I used it a lot in my raps. A baby bubble, baby bubble to the boogie to bang, bang, the boogie to the B. B. A M A S, a T E R, a G with a double E. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, like, I still to this day can't really get a hold of how much of an impact that this music has had on the world. Well, it's on and on and on and on and on. Rapper's Delight first hit the charts in 1979, making it to the Billboard Top 40 and number four on the R&B charts. But the story of their coming together is so unlikely. Oh! This is ground zero, yeah. literally. It all began at Crispy Crust, a pizza shop in Inglewood, New Jersey. Somebody said that the guy Hank in the pizza parlor rap. That guy was Big Bank Hank, living in the Bronx but working here in Inglewood and rapping while he made pizza. He was discovered by Sylvia Robinson, singer turned producer and founder of Sugar Hill Records, on a mission to make the first rap record. So now in my mind, I'm tripping because I'm like, oh snap, that's Sylvia. Uh, what do you know about Sylvia? I know that she's the big time recording artist. She's got the studio. So the Sugar Hill Gang was formed with three guys who just met. They laid down the 15 minute version of Rapper's Delight in just one take. But there were some hitches. The music track had been sampled directly from the song Good Times by Sheik. And Hank was using rhymes written by Grandmaster Kaz, an artist he actually managed. With the meteoric success of Rapper's Delight, she co-founder Nile Rogers threatened to sue and was eventually credited as a writer and paid royalties. Grandmaster Kaz took no action and never got credit or royalties. Wonder Mike says he knew Rapper's Delight would be a hit, and he says his goal was for his rhymes to engage everyone. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to 
Let me. What you hear is not a test. I got that from the Outer Limits. And me, the groove, and my friends are going to try to move your feet. Your feet. Well, who are you? I am one of my guys. I like to say hello. To who? I included the world. I the purple. I wish I had thought of something else. And to yellow. the black, to the white, the red, and the brown. Purple and yellow. The first thing got bang, bang. The wicked, the wicked. So the record hits. Yes. Yeah. What did you see? What did you hear? What was the reaction? Now that was crazy. So I go back to high schools. Every single store, every single car, car. everywhere I went, I could keep, I, and it would start crazy. one place to start again. I was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be a little bit more than what I thought. It is hard not to marvel at Master G living his best life these days on the golf course. See? All right, okay. I don't pay attention. <laughs> no. I get hustled out here. No, you hustle me. You try to hustle me on the other hole. My name is known all over the world by all the fox, the ladies, and the pretty girls. I'm Rapper's Delight opened doors the Sugar Hill Gang could never have imagined. Now I'm feeling the highs and you're feeling the lows. The beat starts getting into your toes. You start... G fully appreciates the recognition this groundbreaking record has always commanded. We played a few holes at the North Shore Towers and Country Club at a charity event. Like, you got to remember, I'm the first commercially successful hip-hop artist in the world. Right. So I saw it from day one. Right. About 14 million copies have sold since the record's release in 1979. It's still central to their lives decades after the needle first dropped. But there were dark days, even with Rapper's Delight's meteoric success. Master G, along with Wonder Mike, say they were cut out of their record's financial success. Producer Sylvia Robinson is said to have not included any of the group in profits or royalties. Within about five years, Master G and Wonder Mike left Sugar Hill Records and fell onto hard times. Whatever happened, happened. Okay, there's no way that we could be in this room together if we didn't overcome. And there was a lot to overcome. In 2005, the Robinson family also blocked them from using the stage names that had been theirs for 23 years. It was more than a decade until the group and Robinson's son Leland reached a hard-won truce. Back on the golf course, gratitude for all they have and have been through remains central. Sometimes I can't even grasp that I'm connected to it like I am. Right. Because it's so, it's so meteoric. It's just, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Mind-blowing. Totally. We were joined there by the rest of the group and hip-hop legend and Sugar Hill recording artist Melly Mel of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. What do you think of the fact that today people are rediscovering your music? How I look at uh, uh, what rap music and hip-hop has become is, is a lot easier to be, to make the records, and then it's a lot easier to be the performer of the records. When you peel the highs, they have to peel the low. The beat starts getting into your toes. I knew that it was going to open up a whole new genre of music because if it's catchy, it, things catch on. This is something that I was given the gift to do. So every single day that I wake up, I'm thankful and grateful. Mm -hmm. And it's only getting better. through hip-hop history from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? What's your overall impression? First of all, I'm inspired. It's, it's a bunch of legendary pieces and displays in here that just make you think about the start of everything. The guys that set the way for us, the guys that set the way for artists like me to do what I do, it really inspires me to just see what I could take from it for my career. Never needed all the fame, I just need a green. Keep a trick on my sleeve, streets cold like three degrees. First to make it out my hood since B.I.G. Come to the club, see me VIP. 
That was music from Jay Critch. We've been exploring 50 years of hip hop with him. Born in Brooklyn, writing and rhyming from his teens, and getting an incredible history lesson here, going through some of the memorabilia that will ultimately grace the museum. Those items, plus thousands more, will be here in 2025 when this state-of-the-art exhibition space opens to the public. You never thought that hip-hop would take it this far. Those are the words from the iconic, the notorious B.I.G., and they stand tall on the outside of the hip-hop museum. It was all a dream. It's the unlikely but true story of the music that changed the world. You never thought that hip hop would take it this far. It's more than just music and art. It's a lifestyle. It's part of today's, you know, American tapestry. It's a cultural renaissance. Rocky Bucano is the executive director. He shared his vision for the 53,000 square foot museum. I need something big and massive to make sure that the entire story, not just the local story, but the global story of hip hop can be told. And there's a lot to tell and ambitious plans to present it all. Thousands of items, artifacts, memorabilia, hip hop artists and culture represented in words, music, videos, pictures, clothing, and more. So when they come in here, they're gonna see not just the story of how hip hop started here in the Bronx, but how hip hop has impacted the entire world. What do you hope people feel, experience, and come away with when they come to the museum? I want them to be shocked of what hip hop actually is. They are very familiar with the Run DMCs and the Missy Elliott. Is it worth it? Let me work it. And they have a pretty good understanding of what the music is, but they don't understand what hip hop actually has done for the world, you know, helping Barack Obama get elected into office. You know, it was the hip hop community that really galvanized his whole campaign. People like Jay-Z and Diddy, you know, really getting the vote out. People like Public Enemy speaking about what it is to live in a society where the haves and the have nots are so far apart. Groups like Queen Latifah and NWA and Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and Eminem. They all spoke truth to power. It resonates with so many people. What does it mean to the Bronx? Because it could have been anywhere. This is probably one of the most important developments that the Bronx will have and may ever have in terms of economic development. That's a big statement. It, it is. It's a huge statement. It, it's, it's a huge statement, but it's pretty accurate. Not only will people come and experience something that has been a major part of the development and the cultural lifestyle of the people who, who live in the Bronx, we expect millions and millions of people to take that journey up to the Bronx, and I, I expect it to be f phenomenal. These guys, bro, trendsetters, you know what I mean? Everybody was doing the Adidas, the gold rope chains because of these guys, you know what I mean? Right, like the first ones. The first ones. Imagine that, nobody did that before. No one. I'm the king of the Before they were kings, Run DMC first connected right here in Hollis, Queens. This is my this house is, right here. Yeah. What's it like to see it? It makes me forget I've done all the stuff that I've done in my life. It's like that. And DMC, Daryl McDaniels, has done a whole lot. Run DMC were the first rappers to have a gold album back in 1984, and were the first rap act to appear on MTV, and the first to fuse rap with rock. When I first heard hip hop, I was like, oh shoot, you could tell stories over music about who you are right. and not be ashamed. The rhymes that you hear are the rhymes of Jarrell's. Like each and every year we bust Christmas Christmas. The only thing that I was connected with when I was younger was comic books, because comic books was the only time I saw geeky, nerdy, confused, awkward people who were badass. Right was in the comic book. And you can Peter relate. Parker. You can totally relate. But when hip-hop came, I just started writing around. The home's current owner invited us in so we could see firsthand where the magic happened. Yeah, yeah, I live in Queens. I love, love eating chicken and collard greens. Right, 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 right here. It was on a regular kitchen table, right. two turntables, a mixer, speakers, and the records. I was right there. 
You did everything right, yeah. DMC's roots run deep in Hollis. Yo, yo, what up, what up? So when he wasn't here, he was in the alleyway around the corner. Yeah, the alley is where on Adidas we say started in the alley. Mm -hmm. Now we're chilling Cali. We won't trade Adidas for no deep up valleys. This is the alley? This is the alley. So this was like the, the hangout spot. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the neighbors poor, loved it, right? Yeah, they, they love having kids back Some there. of them would pour water now, I don't know, but we come right back. You roller skate, you play basketball, you go to school, you eat dinner, and you do this hip hop thing. Run DMC's hip hop thing hit the scene in 1983 with their first record, Sucker MCs. Raising Hell was their third studio album, and it hit number one on Billboard's R&B chart, the first hip hop album to do so. The mega hit remix of Walk This Way brought hip hop to an even wider audience. Their version got to number four on the charts. Aerosmith was at 10. You know, all my runs was always family, mm -hmm. school, and things that I did. So my runs was all about domestic life, a comfortable, happy life. When I heard it, on the records and I heard it on the tapes. Mm -hmm. These boys and girls had nothing. Mm -hmm. The Bronx was burning. Mm -hmm. A tough time. They had, no, I had everything. Mm -hmm. I had both hands. Mm -hmm. I was born Beyond making music history and selling millions of records, there's DMC's work with kids and charitable foundations, his new children's book and comic book series. It is that connection to family and community that's still central to how DMC lives today, setting the tone as young DMC on Nickelodeon and playing himself on That Girl Lele. Nothing started working until I went out there and the mics came on and the music came on. On our walk through Hollis, he was spotted by a young super fan. I recognize you from that girl, Lele. Yes, that's me. How you? What's your name? Violet. Violet. Yes, I was on that girl, Lele. Oh my goodness! Oh, let's take a picture. <laughs> that's gotta blow your mind. Not, it's not that it doesn't happen all the time, but it's still gotta blow your mind. No, it, right, it does. Right? It's 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 always. It never gets old. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. Responsibility to. To the boys and girls that created the culture. I don't want people to respect me because I had made it in show business. I want people to respect me because I was able to kick down, crash through walls, come through floors, bust through ceilings, and knock down doors, and leave the doors open for everybody else to follow. And before long, the doors will be open to the Hip Hop Museum. What a journey it's been, and what a privilege to take you through it, especially as a fan who's been there since the beginning. Our thanks to all the legends who've joined us, and to Jay Critch, part of the next generation set to take hip hop into its next half century. I'm Maurice Dubois. Thanks so much for watching Hip Hop at 50, Born in the Bronx. It's so funny to me that these guys are history to you. For real. And I lived it.